right, well, welcome back to five minutes on K-12 online learning with, and today we have J Dr. Jason Psycho joining us again for this second season, if you will, of the uh, program. So Jason, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So currently I'm an instructional technology consultant for Wayne Risa, which is a regional education service agency in the Metro Detroit region. I support local districts and our content area consultants in the area of technology integration, which right now has focused almost solely on the shift to remote learning. Uh, before that, I was a science teacher for 13 years. And in between that time, um, I earned a PhD in instructional technology and have held uh, several academic appointments as a professor in teacher preparation with respect to educational technology. Um, in my research, I generally focus on K-12 online learning, in particular uh, student online readiness. And as a side note, I hold a degree in strategic foresight and have done futurist work in consulting here and there across the past decade. Very good. So right now we've got folks that are at their remote learning and, and regardless if this goes till the end of the school year or if we finish up sometime in May, this school year isn't going to go the way in which it would normally go. So what advice would you have for school leaders as they look to both the end of this school year, but how to start off the next school year? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, districts should probably spend a lot of time getting feedback from their stakeholders, the parents, the teachers, the kids, the community, you know, get some, you know, conduct a, a postmortem, if you will, like what has worked, what hasn't. And that's, should be used to inform your approach for, for summer learning and for professional development. If there's opportunities to in, um, do some remediation with students, great. If not, then you know, that informs how you want to plan out next year. But then also um, for teachers and professional development, what, what would they wish they had uh, beforehand? And then focus on that uh, because as a lot of us are, are seeing, this is probably going to see a re we're probably going to see a resurgence in, in the fall or winter. So, and then lastly, you know, with respect to the parents in the community, how do you build capacity for, for multiple pathways for learning? And how are you going to be able to figure out how to shift and, and be nimble on a moment's notice? Because, you know, this, this kind of came out of nowhere for, for many school districts. And so chances are a resurgence will come out of nowhere and they'll have to make a decision within a week or so. Speaking of that, thinking ahead to, again, the fall or summer learning for teachers, how do school leaders get prepared for the reality that we might have a second or third wave coming through or there might be local spikes that cause an individual district or a couple of neighboring districts to have to, to close down uh, in short order? Well, I, you know, right now, and going back to the summer thing is, you know, there's Districts are going to need to collaborate with, you know, politicians, unions, um, lobbyists, you know, stakeholders to address legislation. Um, some states are really handcuffed by laws concerning online learning because they, they was strictly defined as physical seat time uh, is the way to measure uh, instructional time. Those need to be addressed before the beginning of the next school year. Uh, and, and that won't be easy. It's an election year. Legislators already have plenty on their plate. They might consider that a lesser issue when compared to economic policy or things like that. Um, and not to mention the general gridlock in, in some states where you have mixed party leadership at, in either legislative branch or between the legislative and, and executive branch. You know, the other thing is that um, they're going to have to deal with the, uh, with the notion of, of budget cuts. I know in my state currently, we're hearing probably because of lack of sales tax revenue, um, you know, 300 to $700 per pupil in, in funding cuts. So that's going to need to be addressed as well. Um, but getting back to the uh, uh, planning and, and with respect to training and communication, getting feedback, teachers were asked to do a lot with a little bit of prep time. So um, they need to be more nimble, as I mentioned, and you know, the probability of, of a lengthy and immediate closure is going to be pretty high. Um, with that training, there's a, there's a technical side and a pedagogical side. Um, the technical side, I think people are kind of learning on the fly. You know, how do I operate Zoom? How do I operate Google Classroom? I kind of know how to do it, but, you know, and then they add features or take away features as we've seen with Zoom and, and Google Classroom. But, you know, from the pedagogical side, uh, many teachers just, hey, I got to move online. I'm going to do exactly what I do normally, only online. And that's, that's one of the things that we're going to really need to focus on. So what are the types of things we can explore here? 
um, as the school year starts or even as the summer PD training. Um, how do you how do you involve teachers in becoming more interactive in an online environment? And by and large, that will transfer. How do I make my teaching more interactive in a face to face environment? Um, maybe look at things like competency based education or universal design for learning. And, and only I only mention those not because they're 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 cure alls or panaceas, but the idea here is that we're going to need to have to focus on multiple pathways of learning uh, and be able to shift to those on a moment's notice. So um, with respect to preparing that, that second wave is how do I make myself more nimble and how do I prepare myself to you know, do learning in multiple environments and have students demonstrate their learning in multiple ways in multiple environments. Very good. So thank you, Jason. This has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with has been Dr. Jason Psycho. Thanks for having me.